Video 0908. Electrical outlets. Connections. There's an old electrical contractor saying, red goes to red, black goes to black, and if there's out left, cut it off. I thought I'd start this exercise with a little bit of humour, because this subject is fairly complex. The connections we create in our families have to be exactly right. Any loads or voltages must conform to the standards that you're creating in your project template. The Revit out-of-the-box regional templates do cater for some of this, but you have to be aware of them. And as for the conduit connections, I'm not suggesting that you put a conduit connector on every face of every family, but it might be worth considering if you want to go down the constructible route of creating your model, especially if you want to know the lengths of all conduits in your projects. So let's put this into practice in the family that we've been working on in this chapter. From your chapter 9 folder, open the file My Socket Outlet is Switched and swap to a 3D view. It's obviously going to be very hard to work on this with the view in its current state. So select the extrusion that makes up the host and from your view control bar, hide that element. It might also be a good idea to turn thin lines on. I'm now ready to add the electrical connector. The placement of an electrical connector is purely arbitrary. So for this exercise, I'm going to place it on the back side of the box. Select the electrical connector. For placement, I'm choosing face and I'll select the back face of the box. Let's take a look at the properties. Click on modify and then select the connector. From the properties palette, we can see that we've got several options. And although I can add a voltage here, I may want to be able to control that in the family. An example of this may be whether you have a 110 volt or a 240 volt socket outlet. If I look at family types, we can see that we have no properties here for electrical. So let's start linking properties. For voltage, let's create or add a parameter and call this switch voltage. And we'll place this under electrical loads. Click on OK. We'll do the same for the apparent load phase 1. Add the parameter, call it load, click on OK, and OK again. As we do this, if I go back to family types, you'll see that the electrical loads are now being added to the family. Let's add load classification, add the parameter, we'll call this load classification, click on OK, and OK again, and whether we want to introduce a power factor. This could be done by individual socket or a type of sockets, but this can also be specified as part of the load classification. So I'm going to leave this at one, come back to my family types, and let's see what we have in terms of parameters. Now here's a neat trick for filling out data in families where you've already got several types. This does only work for certain parameters, but if you've got three or four types and the value is the same for each type, type the value in in the formula and press enter. You'll see that the switch voltage is now locked, but it's the same for each type. I can now remove the formula and I can change that in each type now if I want to. I'll do the same for the load. Click on apply. Remember to remove it. And we should see that in the other family types. We'll have to do the load classification slightly differently. If I select the box, you can see that I can now browse to load classifications. If these aren't part of your family template, then you either need to create new ones or use the transfer project standards to bring through the load classifications and demand factors from other families. So here I'm going to create a new load classification. We'll call this socket, click on OK, and now to change the demand factor. Let's create a new demand factor. I'll call this commercial socket outlets. Click on OK. The calculation method is going to be placed by load incrementally for each range. And then we'll add a range. 
If it's less than or equal to 5,000 VA, we'll use 100% demand factor. If it's greater than 5,000, then we'll use 75%. And click on OK. Finally, select the load class, power, and click on OK. Let's see what happens in the other types. We have to go back through these and change them separately. I can't use the same process as before. It tells me that the parameter cannot be defined by formulas. But a quicker way of getting there rather than just clicking on other is to click on the right hand side of that box. That takes me straight to the load classifications. Select socket and click on OK. And we'll do that for the vertical one. Click on apply. This exercise is now complete and we can turn our attention to the conduit. We'll look at that in our next video.